hi guys you're welcome back so in this video we're going to be treating the week 4 problems so let's get into it um, okay so the problems of week 4 we are going to be treating problems on try except functions recursion lambda functions and the math module okay so brace up it's going to be a long one but I'll try to keep it short as possible so write a program, we are starting with the try except. So write a program that prompts the user to enter two numbers and then print the result of dividing the first by the second number. So use a try except block to handle all the possible exceptions. Okay, so copy this then. I have to bring it to your notice that while working with this kind of uh, problems, you have to think very wide. To think of possible errors that one can run to if they want to write this kind of problems okay if they want to solve this kind of uh, if they want to write this kind of um, program so well the first two errors that the, the two possible errors that we can think of here we have the value error that is if the user should enter a word then, then we instead of a number you enter a word or if the second number is zero so we are going to be having a zero division error so those are the two possible errors let me see if i can write it out to make it more clearer so let me see errors to handle no mm, errors to handle the first error that we can handle over here is the value error the value error okay this value error it can occur if the user enters a word and not enters anything apart from a number enters any value except a number okay then the second error will be the zero division error okay this error will occur if the second um, value is zero okay so let's start to write the program now so writing the program um you can do something like try then you start num one please i hope the sound of this llama boss is not entering this recording I'm sorry about that so you can do something like num one equal to float then input you can do something like enter a number then you put some space oh god the sound of this llama boss you come in let me close this window Okay, I think it's better now. So, float input, enter a number, then num2 equal to float um, float input, then enter another number to make it more descriptive we can say enter denominator i hope this is correct okay it should be d denominator enter numerator okay so we put in this and a few spaces now um you can say results equal to num one over num2 then you can print something like results no you can do something like this use a formatted string results equal to then results okay so now let's start accepting catching the handling the exceptions that's the right way to say it Let's start handling the exceptions. So, for you to handle the first exception, you're going to be having except, then just copy the error. Zero division error. Okay. So, you print, 
cannot divide numerator by zero. Okay. For the second one, except value error. Actually, this value error can, if the user enters any value except a number, yes. So this value error, this value error, either the numerator or the denominator, if the user should enter anything except a number, for either the numerator or the denominator, we are going to be running into a value error here, and this is supposed to be num2. It's supposed to be num2, sorry about that. So, value error. I think I should zoom out a bit. Okay. I think I'll manage it like this. So, accept the value error, then to print enter valid numbers. Okay. So, that is it. So, I think that is the whole program. So, if I should shift enter enter numerator let's say 10 enter denominator say 2 so you can see result is 5.0 no errors if i should run it again and i have 10 and the denom denominator is 0 you see you cannot divide numerator by 0 then if i should run it again and the numerator is something like age you see at this point it's already running into errors because um, into a value error because obviously this float you need to pass in a string that uh, has a digit in it so that has numeric values only for it to pass this float over here so for you to pass it into floats rather so that is that about the first one we we'll move on to the next one create a program that takes an input from the users and accept and attempt to convert it to an integer so we are going to be handling the value error and the type error we are going to be handling the value error and the type error now we are going to be handling them together we are going to be handling them together in this case now so copy the whole of this copy the whole of this then mm, oh. Okay, paste this, come to the beginning, okay, so create a program that takes an input from the user, okay, very good, so don't forget that we're going to be handling the value error and the type error, so I think the value error can occur if they enter any value that is not a number, so the type error will be gotten at the point of conversion, I think. So, you can try, then you say the user input can be something like input, then enter a number, okay, put some space in, then you come and do the conversion, num equal to int, user inputs so you come and print using formatted string you can see converted then you add a colon no okay so now we want to catch the handle the exceptions except now since we are accepting two type of errors at the same time you pass the two of them value error and um, type error then you can print something like this error invalid inputs okay so i think this should do 
I should save this and run it. Enter a number. What number should I enter? 10, for example. You see, converted 10. So if I should do something like each, see, invalid inputs. So the second one is gone. The third one, write a program that takes a list and an index as inputs. Now try to access the element at the given index and undo the index error. So index error basically occurs at the point where you are trying to index a list and the there is the index is out of range or something. So that is where you get index error. For example, if a list has only ten elements, I are trying to the, obviously the last um the last element in the list, the index of that last element will be either minus one. Or nine we have ten elements for you to index the last element you're going to be having negative one as the index or you're going to be indexing nine but if you want to index eleven now you can see the index is, is nowhere to be found so that way you run into an error so how do we go about this one so um, first of all we have to create a list copy Can do something like two, seven, six, five, seven, nine, ten, and say twenty-five. Okay. So we can say the index. We are collecting it from the user. Don't forget equal to. And sorry, this is supposed to be try. Okay. So put a tab space in. Equal to. It has to be an integer. Don't forget int inputs enter a value enter a value for index then the comma say value equal to the list got the list then index after that you come and print using formatted string again the value at index that index is value okay so now I'm going to be handling the index error. The index error. So, except no. Except the index error. Then you can just print something like um. You can print something like. Error index out of range. Okay, so another error that you can encounter here if you look at like this one now is the value error. If the user doesn't enter a, a valid uh, input, so you're going to be having the value error. So let's also catch the value error. So let me just copy this. So this one will be value error. Okay, so invalid inputs. Okay, invalid inputs. Okay, so I think the program is done. If we enter enter a value for the index. If I say index four, for example. The value as four is seven, and this is zero, one, two, two, three, four. Okay, so let me run it and put an invalid. You can see invalid input. Run again. Um, let me say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let me enter index seven. There's no 
It's not supposed to see anything at index 7 or 1, 2, 1, ok, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, ok, let me enter index 8, I didn't count well initially, so you see index out of range, so it is working just fine. We move on to the next one, which is the number 4. I write a program that takes two numbers as inputs, then calculates the result of dividing the first by the second number. I think... I think it's the same thing as this first one over here. I think it's the first, same thing as the first one over here, but I'll just keep it. Zero division error. We handled the zero division error there. So you can see. So I think it's the same thing as this one. I'll just skip that. So create a dictionary with some key value pairs. Then, where is it? Prompt the user for a key and attempt to look up the value associated with that key. So the key error is what you are going to be handling if the key isn't found. Okay, so This box that is moving up and down, the noise is entering this time. Okay, so don't forget. Okay, let me create my dictionary first. So let me say my dict. Let me do something like you can say a one b. Two, C, three. So I can just try to ask the user to enter enter a key. Okay. After entering the key. I'll generate the value which will be my dict indexing key. So print with the formatted string value. value. So, the next thing we want to do is to catch the error, which is this key error over here. Which is this key error over here. So you can print Error key not found. Mm, no, so key not found. So I can run this program now. Enter a key. What key do I want to enter? C. It's in the value of three. But if I should run it and I enter a key of seven, for example key not found. So that is the key error. Moving on, write a program that accepts to perform an operation that could raise either a zero division error or a value error. Use a single try except to catch both. Zero division error comes up when you divide a, a number by zero. So I think I'll still refer this to the first one. I made a mistake. So that is for number six. 
for number seven write a program that takes a number as input and it will raise an exception by itself it will raise the exception by itself if the number that uh, is entered is negative okay so if the number that is entered that enters is, uh, is negative so number seven you can Okay, so try. You can do something like you can do something like user inputs, then enter a value. Okay, so if if these are inputs is less than zero, raise exception that says negative value and that so there's an error somewhere okay so this is not supposed to be inside the try block. This is not supposed to be inside the try block. Since I'm the one raising the exception now, so it's not supposed to be in the try block. If I should enter this six, it will not do anything. If it's our inputs. Okay, I have to convert this first. So Eval. So if this and if this is five, it will not do anything. But if this is negative five, for example, then you see it is raising the exception negative value and that. So that is it. Now we move on to the next one. Create a function that takes an integer as an argument. Inside that function, use an assert statement to check if the integer is positive. Handle the assertion error if the assertion fails. So, assertion basically is like the double equal to operator. Okay, so we copy the next one. Come here. Okay. Now we have this underway. Check a function that takes an integer as argument. Inside the function, use an assert statement to check if the integer is positive. And with the assertion error, if the assertion fails okay so i think the best thing to do is to start with creating the function before making the driver code 
So to create the function, um, you can do something like def verify positive. That is going to be taking a number, and guess what? Then you can do something like assert if the number is greater or equal to zero. So on the long run this number must not be non-negative, okay? So then return number. So now we write the driver code in the try except block. So you try um num equal to int input then enter a number after entering the number so you now see positive equal to you will now verify positive then you pass in num after passing in num you will now print the number don't forget we are using formatted string so we can inject dynamic data into the string positive okay now we catch the assertion error we catch the assertion error so we can do something like accept assertion error as e okay print error then e well don't forget you are bringing an f here for my test string so I have let me put a comment here I think it's the comma. So let me say ten. Okay, the number is ten. Then minus ten. You see I'm getting error, but it's not printing the error out. It's not giving me the error. So let me just add my own custom error. I can do something like number is negative. This should be a mistake. So I don't need this formatted string anymore. So run this, enter a number minus 10. Number is negative, so just straight away. We move on. Write a program that prompts the user for an integer and tries to extract the last digit. So we handle the value error if the user enter a non integer value. Okay? So, very simple. So, we continue by saying try num equal to int input enter an integer okay good enter an integer then the next thing I want to do is to extract the last digit so last Digits equal to num 
modulus 10. I've done this countless number of times, so I believe that you should be able to juggle your way around what I did here. So, if for example I have 1004 and I want to get the last digit, so I can just modulus 10, it will extract the last digit for me. So, now to print the last digit. Okay, so that is last digit for you. Then don't forget that we are handling an exception. Except no value error. Then you come and print your error invalid input. Okay, so. I shall run this 582. The last digit is 2, but if I enter number, you see, invalid inputs. So we move on to the last one, I guess. Create a program that takes a list of numbers as inputs and calculates their average. Use a try except block to, un to handle the possible exception when trying to convert the numbers. Okay, copy then. So. So now to collect a list of numbers by species, we have to apply wisdom. Okay. So what the user will be giving us is something like twelve, um, fifty-two, seventeen, ninety-four, and all that. So we are going to be having species here. They're going to be having species, species, species. So, and this is going to come in form of a string. Don't forget by default. This is what the user is going to be giving us. Now, the list has, the string has this uh, list method, this split method rather that you can use to convert it to a list. Okay. So, with the split method, I'm going to be passing in a space to the split method. Uh, um, by default. It takes a space as the splitting delimiter, that's what they call it. The split delimiter. So, the split delimiter means that it will partition everything. This will be a separate entity, this will be a separate entity, this will be a separate entity, then this will also be a separate entity. Okay, let's move on. So, try. So, num, num string. Okay equal to input enter numbers with spacing now string no this will be num list input Enter, enter, no, 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 what am I doing, this is not what I'm supposed to do, so this string over here now, you convert it to a list, copy, then bring it here, dot split, okay, so this is what we convert it to a list, now, Now, this is still a list, but it's a list of strings. So, we have to convert to a list of floats. You understand? We have to convert it to a list of floats. So, how do we do that? We can use a list comprehension, something like this. Num list equal to floats x for x in num list. Then, after doing this, you come for the average AVG 
equal to the sum of num list over the length of num list. So moving on, come and print the average and go your way. So print format string average AVG except value error print error invalid input so run this let me just put the all of this one save time you see according to python the average is this and i don't know i don't want to challenge it if you want you can pick up your calculator and you try to verify so enter numbers with spacing i am a boy you see error invalid input so that is all for try except so we move on to functions moving on with functions we go to the first problem write a function called hello world that prints hello world when called this is a very simple one actually all the function problems here are quite simple so paste this so just you can say the name of the function is hello world so def hello underscore world it's not taking any arguments parameters rather just print hello world so print hello and world and call the function hello world and that is it for number one for the second one write a function that will add num that is called add numbers takes two arguments return their sum very simple come here so let me see if i have to zoom in a bit okay so def add numbers x and y will be the two numbers then just return x plus y and then you can do something like print add numbers 9 and 16 this should give you 25 yes so the third one write a function max of three that takes the numbers then returns the largest one very simple also copy this come here no i think this should do so the max of three you can see x y z then what do you want to do return max that is this function mex inbuilt so you can you just pass in the list of numbers so i can just pass it in as a list or i can just pass in my x y and my z directly and boom i have my solution so the next thing I want to do is to test it out. Okay, so max of three of nine, twelve, fourteen, 
should return to f no the maximum of three there seem to be a mistake somewhere return is this supposed to go in as a list the maximum of three this is nine twelve and fourteen so it's supposed to give me 14 well let me do it manually i don't know why this max is misbehaving okay so i can say the max let me say the max value is x then if y is greater than x then max value equal to y and i'll do the same thing for z this is the manual way to do it this max function i don't know why it is misbehaving today so this should be if it is more than the max value actually yeah. So this one is Z. X value equal to Z. So what you are returning is max value. So you see, it's giving me 14 now. So this is the correct thing. But max is supposed to work. But let's just move on for now. Define a function is even true if it's even and false if it is odd okay so copy this okay so what do you want to do def is even then you take in a norm okay so moving on what you want to do is um, what you want to do is to return num greater than or equal to zero yes this is what you want to return so this will return true if the number is okay wait is even or odd okay this should be percentage two equal to zero so this is the test for even or odd number the other one i wrote is for positive or negative number so it's even two you see it's giving me true if i say nine it's giving me false so Create a function to calculate like it takes length and width of a rectangle and it returns the area. I think the area of a rectangle is the length times the width. The length times the width. So so the calculate rectangle area so it will accept length and width and it will return area which is equal to length times width very simple so I can just call this function I'm putting maybe four by maybe four by ten. That should be forty. So that will be forty. Okay. So write a function print n times that will take a string and an integer n as arguments and print the string n times. Okay. This is also simple. So, I 
and print the string n times. So you can say um, def print n times. the string and n I think I should leave a space okay so print n times so you can just say for i in range n print string but I can do something like end equal to so it, it, it print it in the same line so but I didn't make a um, what do they call it I didn't make provision for you uh, the user entering a negative number so please you do that on your end so print n times okay the string is something like hello genius print it seven times you see so it's printing everything on the same line but if i remove this one if i remove to this one See, everything will be on a straight line, but I think it's better this way. So, moving on, define a function power that takes two numbers, base and exponent, calculates and returns the base raised to the power of the exponent. Copy and um, Base raised to the power of the exponent. So the power equal to base and exponent. Okay. Just return base raised to the power of the exponent, and that is all. For example, power of two raised to the power of three. Return that will be 2 exponent 3 straight away so we we'll move on to the next one define a function min max takes a list of numbers and returns the minimum and maximum values in the list minimum and maximum value in the list hopefully we won't have to do it manually now <laughs> so def min max array okay so return a list that is mean of array the second item will be max of array so I can say mean max of let me use the same list I have over here Yes, 9 and 14. So, 9 and 14. The minimum is 9, the maximum is 14. So, I think I was supposed to pass it in as a list here. I was supposed to pass it in as a list here. So, well, that is it. Moving on, create a function div mod result that takes two no integers. It returns both the quotient and the remainder of A by B. Okay? No problem. So, so div mod 
result takes A and B, it returns both the quotient and the remainder. So I can say quotient equal to A integer modulus B, then the remainder will be equal to A modulus B. So return quotient comma remainder. Okay. So I can just do something like div mod results then I can say 10 and 3. You see the quotient is 3. If you divide 10 by 3 it will be 3 remainder 1 which is what I'm having here. So we move on. Create a function join list element that takes a list of strings as the first argument and an operational an optional separator as the second argument. If you return a single string where the list element are joined using the separator. Okay. So copy So I'm having the array, then the separator. Since the separator is optional, I can just initialize it as an empty list or a spacebar, since it is optional. So I can do something like return separator dot join then array. Let's say I have I um a boy. So I can do something like um words equal to this list. So join list elements join list elements if I pass in words only you see I am a boy it's given everything but I can now add a separator maybe um if I add a separator of maybe three dash three iPhones rather you see I am a boy it is working just fine so we'll move on power lists okay Okay, power lists. Then I'm passing in. What am I passing in? I'm supposed to be passing in my array. Then exponents. I can just initialize to one. So that should be def. Yeah. 
Okay, so write a function that takes a list of numbers. Item, but this time the item will be raised to the power of the exponent. Okay, then array will come here. So now you do something like this. Um, we do something like let me use this one since it's a bigger list power list then exponent of maybe 5 you see wait 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 wait, wait. Is raised to the power of the exponent, so this should be multiplication um, exponent. So run this. Yes, it's working fine now. Let me use a smaller exponent. So for example, two. Yes, you can see it's a one, one forty-four. So it is working fine. So yeah, I think that will be the end of functions. Now we want to work on recursions. Recursions. So re create a recursive function that uh, sum list that's going to take a list of numbers, then returns the sum of all the elements in the list. So okay. Okay. So. Moving on, a recursive function. Don't forget, a recursive function is a function that at some point will call itself. You get at some point, the function is going to be made to call itself. So I did an example in the video itself where I said, um, for example, a doctor, if you are feeling ill at some point and um, you, all you have to do is, or a pharmacist, all you have to do is to prescribe drugs for yourself. This is some, a function that you perform for other people. When they are ill, they call the pharmacist to come and do some prescription for them. But when you are ill, you are able to call yourself. It's a function other people used to call, but this time you are calling yourself. You get the same thing goes for a mechanic too. You repair other people's cars. When your own car spoils, obviously you should be able to repair it yourself. So that is like a function made to call itself. So we are going to be doing a bit of demonstration here using these exercises. So create a reinforcing function that takes a list of numbers. Let me use this number. Or let me use 1 to 10. I think the sum of all the numbers between 1 to 10 is 55. Sum of... Let me use list comprehension to confirm. Say... Um, item for item in range 1,11. Yes, 55. So, this function I we want to write now, we should be expecting 55 since it's 1 to 10, like for the testing. So, the a recursive function, sum list. So, sum list. It's going to be taking a list array. Okay. So, like I said in the video, while writing recursions, you have to be very, very careful. So, recursions are written in two different forms, in two, in two, I don't know, in two steps, or more than two. You have a base case and you have the recursive case. Now, I've never run into a situation where I'm having multiple recursive cases. So, but you might run into a situation where you have to where you have to write multiple recursive cases. But for these problems that we have, I think it's only one that we have. So, some list array. Um, the base case now. The base case is you can say if the length of array equal to one. Just return. What are we going to be returning? Return array indexing zero. Yes. So 
the first item will be the only item in the list actually so now the recursive cases for the recursive case I can, I can use else actually so I'll now say return array indexing the first item which is zero plus some list again but at this point is going to be the first item to the end so the zeroth item is out of the list over here the zeroth item is out so I think no that should be what am I doing that should be array indexing one yes colon to the end so I can just say some list set of some over here so return it you see it's giving me the same 55 so you can see that this list item basically is um, 1 to 10 if I add 11 it's supposed to be 66 so let me make this one 12 you see it is 66 if I'm going to be adding 13 it's supposed to be 79 13 no 66 plus wait if I add 12 if I stop at 12 that's 66 okay yes if I add 12 that would be 78 so 13 is going to be stopping at 12 so yes it's true 78 if I'm going to be adding 13 to this this should be 91 so I shift this one to 14 91 it is working just fine so we move on to the next one write a recursive function a recursive function list length that calculates the length of a list okay that calculates the length of a list that calculates the length of a list so Def. So I'm going to be having an array. Then I'll start with my base case. Don't forget base case. If the length of the array equal to one, we'll return one. Now the recursive case. else don't forget that this else is still part of this if statement over here so else return one plus but at this point you're going to be indexing the first item to the end so now to find the let me use this one or oh, how many elements are here one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so wow rain is falling now hopefully the sound of the rain will not distort the sound to list length nine yes you see one two three four five six seven eight nine two it's correct and um, we move on define a recursive function reverse string that takes a string as input and return its reverse i'm very sure that this particular program i've solved it more than four times so i don't mind solving it one more time 
so reverse string def reverse string it takes to a string then your base case I don't have to comment it anymore so if the length of the string now how do you come up with your base case and your recursive case you have to think you have to think this is one of the reasons why they will tell you that um, you don't have to be a programmer you, you don't have to be a you don't have to be a smart person to program but programming will make you smart because programming will stretch the length and the width of your thinking <laughs> whatever so you, you just have to think at one point do i want the recursion to break depending on the algorithm you want to implement so if the length of the string equal to one basically just return one now some of these things that we have been implementing since is based on the condition that um, the user will not give us a, an empty list if the user should give us an empty list here we are in trouble so basically all you have to do is if the length of the list is zero just return zero straight away so it, it, it won't even get to this one so for this other one over here if the length of the list is a zero just return zero before you start writing all these ones so like i said you just have to think you just have to think so let me implement it in this one if the length of of the string equal to zero return zero straight away before it even gets to the base case so else return what do you want to return okay I want to return string indexing the last item plus I want to do concatenation reverse string reverse string this string now I'm going to be indexing from the beginning till the last element so let us try it out you can do something like reverse string United States of West Africa I know one hater there will be telling me they play I'm running into an error. What happened? Can only concatenate. Okay. No, 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 no. If the length of the array is one, just return. Return the string. Not to return here is the string. I made a mistake. Just return the string. So this should work now. Yes, 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 yes. You can see the United States of West Africa okay so write a recursive function is palindrome to check if a given string is a palindrome Okay, so is palindrome is palindrome well there are so many ways to write this one but what I would want to do for this particular problem to keep it simple will be to write this function on top of this one so basically I can just say the is palindrome 
so I can say what then I'll say return word equal to what so if I have something like you see true so I, I, I think I'll just I'll rather do this for now I'll rather do this for now define a recursive function okay it takes two numbers with an exponent okay Say the power base exponent. So if exponent equal to zero, then you can do something like return one return one if exponent equal to one return base else return base multiplied by power base exponent minus one so let's do two raised to the power of three or two raised to the power of four you see sixteen so it is working fine and if I raise it to the power of zero I'll be getting one so so subset that takes a list of positive integers and the targeted sum and shows true if okay 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 so we have our number six um, define a recursive function So let's start working on this. Let's say we have a dub subsets, then subset norms. Then we are going to be having norms and targets. Then we have targets. So we can have an optional argument over here, but it's just for the function itself equal to zero. So the first thing I want to check for is if if the target is zero, then just return true. So if you have a list and you're telling me that what combination will I have that is going to be giving me zero, basically just decide to choose nothing and you have your zero. So the second one is if this index this index that is zero now. If for any reason it is greater than length of norms, which is very rare, then if it's greater than or equal to length of the numbers, just return false and go away. Return false. 
so we now do something like if the norms indexing this index is less than or equal to the target what do I want to do I will say if the subset sums This should be sum. This should be sum. I can say the subset sum. I'll call it again. I'll pass in norms again. Then I'll pass in targets, but this time I'll be subtracting norms indexing index then I will increase the index by one to return true but if this doesn't work just return subset sum in num targets then index plus one so the first thing I want to do is to check the target if the target is zero just leave it and go away uh, return true if the index is greater than the length of the numbers, which is very rare, bring it to false. Now, if the num norms indexing index is less than or equal to target, so I want you to call subset again, but this time you increase the index by one, and you remove the target by the number of the current index, you pass in norms, you understand? So if this is yielding true, then just return true. Returning true, or you return this. So basically, this is my base case, and this is my recursive case. This is my recursive case. So this is another recursive case over here. This is the base case. This is the base case. So let's make an example usage. Numbers equal to, let's say, 3, 7, Two, one, eight. Then we have the sum as eleven. Then let us just So three plus seven, ten plus one is what? Eleven. So if I should say numbers is terms, then target is going to be T sum. They say true, which is three plus seven. Uh, 10 plus 1 11 and the target sum is 11 so the program works fine then going to the last one the recursive function for coin change I'm going to be writing a generic function but for this one but I'm sure that if you plug in your whatever parameters you have you should work for this one so Now, let me see the coin change. Then I have the coins. Then I have the amount. Okay. So I'll start writing my function. If the amount is equal to zero, just return an empty net nested list.
So if amount is less than zero or there's no coin available, just return an empty list and go away. Now I can say I can do something like include current coin. I can say include current coin, then I'll do something like coin change. Call the coins again. Then you do something like this amount. minus coin then you index negative one so basically we are going to be having the coins in the descending order so just like the uh, naira currency now we have 1500 200 100 we are going to be having 50 20 10 and 5 so you can see the descending order like that so that's why I'm going to be indexing from the back, which is negative one. So exclude current coin. So coin change coins indexing everything up to the last coin. then amount amount so moving on you can have something like results equal to an empty list now you start a for loop um for um, include current coin You can do something like this um, result.append. We are trying to append to the list. So, result.append, you say combo plus. You open this, you can do something like coins. Indexing negative one. Um, okay, so I can say result dot extend exclude current coin. Please, this ice cream seller. Hopefully, the sound is not becoming very annoying I apologize for that so just return the results so let's test the function out first let's test the function out let's see the coin values equal to let's say one two five actually i'm supposed to be using um ascending order when i explained why i'm using negative one here so it is ascending order not descending order so you can see the way i have my coin values one to five so the amount equal to what five then you can generate the combo No combination equal to coin change coin values amount to um where 
where is coin coming from? Or oh, not coin? It should be coins. Okay. So you can see the possible combinations here we have. We can have, you can see the coin values I have, 1, 2, and 5. So the first combination I can have is a singular 5. Just a static singular 5. Then I can have 1, 2, 2. It will give me 5, which is the target amount. I can have 1, 1, 1, 2, which will give me 5. Then I can have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, which will also give me 5. So that is all for um, recursion. We move on to the lambda functions. Okay. So coming to write the lambda functions, write the lambda function that takes a number as input and returns its square. Okay, so um a lambda function the lambda function y that will accept x and return x raised to the power of 2. So, yeah, no, 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 it should be x raised to the power of 2. Or you can do x times x, both of them will yield the same thing. So, you can just say y 9 81. So, we we'll move on. Lambda function that takes two numbers and returns their sum. Very fine and good. So, um, and it will return their sum. So, basically, all you have to do is y equal to lambda a comma b, then return a plus b. So, do something like y of Two plus five should give you seven. No, two comma five rather. So two comma five, yes, it will give you seven. So two will be a, then five will be b. So to sort a list of strings in alphabetical order. So you can use the sort function. There is a function called sort. So it should be sorted. Sorted. It should be sorted, not sorts. Okay. So sorted. I. So it is sorting it primarily um, in form of capital letter comes before small letter. So it is correct to some extent. It is correct to some extent. So let's just use it directly like that. Y equal to lambda array. Then it will return sorted array. So what do I want to do? Y of let me use the list. Let me use small letter here. Um, a boy. You can see A and boy I. So we we'll move on to the next one. Sort a list of tuples based on the second element of each tuple using the sorted function and the lambda. So this is also simple. I think I solved something similar the last in the last video. Okay. So y equal to lamb lambda array then sorted array but we are going to be having something we say key equal to lamp the x that will return x indexing one so let me say y of okay. 
so let me say two comma three ten comma ten comma one ten comma five comma seven if I should run this you can see the smallest one is one then three then seven so it is sorting all these items based on the second item in the tuple so that is what is happening here that is what is happening here so you can see a nested lambda function a lambda function then we have another lambda function inside a lambda function so we move on write a lambda function that takes a number as input and returns even if it is even and odd if it is odd so you can do something like y equal to lambda um, let's say x then true if x modulus 2 equal to 0 else false yes this is the ternary operator that's what they call it so let me see y of 7 it should give me false this should be capital F but y of it should give me true okay then create a lambda function that takes three numbers as input and returns the maximum of the three So y equal to lambda x comma let me say a comma b comma c then you return the maximum of passing a list x comma no 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 a comma b comma c so let me do something like y of um, 12, 13, 14, let the first item be the maximum, 20, run this, um, okay, let me remove this one, yes, it's true, okay, you see, 20, 20 is the highest, so, it's working fine, then, write a function that takes a list of numbers and a lambda function, Use the lambda function to square each element in the list. So, a function that takes a list of number and a lambda function. So, you're going to be passing the lambda function into the function. So, let me say the square lists are going to be passing the array itself and the function so you can do something like um, output equal to a list comprehension you can say function of item for item in array then return outputs so the first thing I want to do is to write that lambda function so I can say square 
equal to a lambda function that will accept x and it will return x raised to the power of 2 then my list of numbers did I have any list of numbers here okay let me use this one let me use this list of numbers let me add 12 9 25 so just square list array then function which will be square so okay no this should be lists then square i should run this yes so 20 square 12 square 13 square working fine okay so we move on to the math module the math module so write a program that calculates the area of a circle given the radius is math.py so this is very simple this is very simple let me import math first so i won't have to do that for all the program all the code i want to write if i import once that should be fine okay so then the next thing i want to do is to say radius equal to seven obviously the area will be 154.0 yes so radius is seven then area will be i think it's um perimeter is 2 pi r so area is pi r square so um area will be mass dot pi multiplied by r multiplied by r this should be radius let me write it in full to avoid name error print output uh, print area rather okay the reason why I'm getting this is because of this math.py so it's, it's not it's not going to be returning 22 over 7 it will be giving me 3.142 something so math.py so 3.1415 actually so this is where the decimal part is coming from if it were 3.22 um, over 7 directly it will give me 154 so now we are done with that the Euclidean distance between two points the Euclidean distance between two points this is also very simple so the mathematical function for distance between two points distance will be equal to um, x2 minus x1 all this raised to the power of 2 plus y2 minus y1 all raised to the power of 2 then all these things we find the square root so we are going to be raising it to the power of 1 over 2 which is 0 0.5 let us look for the Euclidean distance between two points x1 x2 y1 y2 to be sure that you see x2 minus x1 raised to power 2 plus y2 minus y1 raised to power 2 then everything we are going to be looking for the square root 2 it's correct it's correct let me see if I can um, yeah it's correct it's correct actually so come back here um, 
So this is my formula over here. I can just say I can do something like the x or let me say p1 which is the point 0.1 equal to a tuple let me say 3 comma 5.5 then p2 will be equal to let me say 7 comma 2.25 so p1 will be the um the coordinate of the first point p2 will be the coordinate of the second point so x2 basically will be p2 indexing this item over here so that will be p2 indexing one so p2 indexing one no x2 should be p2 indexing one x1 will be p1 indexing 1 that will be p1 then y2 will be p2 indexing 0 then y1 will be p1 indexing 0 which is the What am I doing? I've actually made a mistake here. Okay, this is X and this is Y. So this is supposed actually supposed to be P2 indexing 0, not P1, P2 indexing 1. Because this is X2 over here. So this should be P2 indexing 0, yes. So this one over here will be P2 indexing, P1 indexing 0. P1. Don't forget this is x comma y. So this one will be p1 indexing zero. Why this one? No, this one will be p1 indexing one actually. Don't forget, it is um, x2, x2 minus x1. <laughs> Good. Hopefully, I don't lead people astray today. x2 minus x1. So, both of them are supposed to be 0, 0. <laughs> both of them are supposed to be 0 and 0. So, this will be p2 indexing 0. This will also be p1 indexing 0. So P2 indexing 1, and P1 indexing 1. Like I said, this is X comma Y, X comma Y. So this is X2 will be P2 indexing 0, X1 will be P1 indexing 0. For Y2, which is this one, will be P2 indexing 1. And like that, like that. So I've calculated my distance basically. But um, I'm not going to be using raised to the power of half. So I'm supposed to be using the SQRT function. So SQRT finds the square root, which is also raised to the power of half. So I can just do, I can just say math dot sqrt then print distance yes so that is my distance over there you can bring out your calculator and actually try it out i'm very sure this is correct so calculate the angle in degrees for a single sine value using the math dot arc sine function okay so well this is fairly simple for the arc sine function for the arc sine function um, for the arc sine function 
So if you look for sine sine 60, you're going to be having 0 0.8660, but sine sine 30 is 0 0.5, which is 1 over 2. So let's use sine 30. So basically, um, act sine, let's say, results in radians first because this math dot act sign is calibrated in radians radians equal to math dot a sign then you bring in 0 0.5 so results in radians run this actually it is giving me the result in degrees directly actually that is a mistake on my end or oh. the result i'm expecting is actually 30 so this is still radiance yes this is radiance so for me to convert this to degrees all i have to do is to say result in degrees equal to equal to mass dot radians mass dot degrees the value I have in radians um, let me see what it is for mass dot degrees x Convert angle x from radians to degrees, yes. So what I have in radians now, I'll just pass it in and it will give it to me in degrees. So take this one out. Okay, so now results in degrees. You see, 30. 30, very correct. I don't know where this point zero 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 four is coming from. So I think one thing I want to do is to say around this result in degrees to maybe two decimal places. Two decimal places and so just do away with the <laughs> with the four. Okay, so yeah, this is it basically. So instead of this 0 0.5, if I want to look for the arc sine of 0 0.8660, 0 0.8660 should be sine 60. So it's 660. I should run this, you see, 60.0. So it's working fine. Um, root 3 over 2, I think it is for sine 45. What will be the value of root 3 over 2? Um, root 3 over 2 will be math dot s q r t three then anything i have divided by two okay root three over two is the um open eight six is zero i think this one should be one over root two this one should be one over root two over math dot s q r t one over root two Yes, so let me just pass the whole of this one. This should give me 45. This should give me 45. Yes, you see, it's giving me 45. So this is just the, the sign table for, I did math in school, so some of these things, we have to carry it off it. We have to carry it off it. But it's just something you can check the internet for to get those values, so you can test whatever you have here, okay? Write a program that calculates the length of the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle given the length of this other two sides using the math.hypot function. So I can just use this one over here. Math dot high pots. Math dot high pots. Okay, so math dot high pots. 
what one thing you would want to do often is to check the the function so expand it um, gives the hypotenuse side okay giving yeah, exactly exactly so we can use this to find the hypotenuse but this is what they want us to do so um, So normally we just pass in the other two sides x and y then it will give us our hypotenuse so what two values can we have for the hypotenuse side i know that if we use if we use six and eight the hypotenuse should be ten so six comma eight the hypotenuse should be ten yes 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 so basically the Pythagoras theorem, as you can see, what they gave to us, is telling you that the hypotenuse, the square of the hypotenuse side, is equal to the square of the sum of the no, to the sum of the square of the other two sides. So that would be adjacent to raised to the power two, raised to the power of two plus opposites raised to the power of 2. So if this adjacent is 6, for example, this will be 36. If opposite is 8, this will be 64. 36 plus 64 is going to be given 100. But this is h squared, so for you to find h, you have to look for the square root of 100, which is 10, which is what it gave us over here. So let's make this program look more understandable. So you can do something like um, add adjacent equal to 6, then opposite equal to 8. Then you can just say adjacent comma opposite. Okay, so... Okay, so we move on. Generate and print a random integer between 1 and 10 using the randint function. Okay, so this is the random module over here, and as you can see, I think we have one more random based function. So I think I want to import random. Then, after importing my random, I can do something like let me paste the question first so i won't be coding blindly so i'm supposed to print a random integer between 1 and 10 a random integer between 1 and 10 so just random dot rand int let me say 1 comma 10 Run this. It's giving me nine. Run it again. It's giving me eight. Run it again. It's giving me five. Run it again. It's giving me ten. Run it again. It's giving me three. Every time you run it, it should give you something different. You can see it's giving me three twice. The likelihood that it will give you two uh, numbers consecutively is very low. So generate and print a random floating point number between 0 and 1 using the random okay a random number between 0 and 1 okay a random floating point number between 0 and 1 Okay, the random function. So, we move on. I've imported random upstairs, so I don't need it again. I think it should be random dot random. It should give me a decimal number between 0 and 1. So, if I should run it again, you see, it's giving me another. So, if you need the number to be in like uh, two or three decimal places, you can use the imbuilt round function. The round function is not dependent on the math module, so just so you know, you can just do it to three decimal places. You see, 
if you should run it again you get another set of numbers run it again you get another set just keep running it to get different numbers okay write a program that converts an angle in radians to degrees using the custom function that multiplies by the ratio of 180 to pi yes that is exactly what we did here that is that, that is what we did here with convert an angle in radians to degrees radians to degrees radians to degrees this is it over here this is the line of code that converts from radians to degrees this math dot sign it will return the angle in radians just passing the radians to math dot degrees and you have your response so let me just I think we should just leave it we should just leave it this is the line of code that converts from radians to degrees just carry whatever you have in radians put it inside math dot degrees and you are good to go so calculate the ceiling and the floor of a floating point number using this okay copy So if I have a floating point number like three, like um, num equal to three point one four two, so you can just print um, print math dot floor floor num and also math dot c u num you can see flying it is giving you three sealing it is giving you four floor will round down to the nearest whole number seal will round up to the nearest whole number so that is just it print the value of the Euler constant using math dot e all you have to do is just math dot e I'm in Jupyter notebook so it will just give it to me. If you are using VS Code, I think you have to print. Okay, so it will give you the same thing. So that is for this one. Write a program that converts an angle in degrees to radians using math to the radians. All you have to do is just the opposite of this, what you did over here. For example, so if the angle in degrees is um, maybe 30 degrees, just say math dot radians. 30 and it will give you the equivalent so you can i think we've gotten this number in this video while i was recording i am at this point so because the answer was 30 i think so it was given this uh, this exact this this number exactly before we now converted it to degree so i believe this is correct so calculate the value of 2 raised to the power of 5 using math.pow all you have to do is math.pow the base which is 2 the exponent which is 5 run it you see I have 32 so that is it there are so many things you can do with the math module I just kept it to this BRS minimum so thank you very much um, I'll see you in the next video this has been a very long one thank you for staying to the end I'll see you in the next one bye for now